Hello my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Today is day two of our Rosy Sew Along. Today we'll be working on the front pocket, that gorgeous 3D front pocket, and the middle panel. It's going to be super easy, so trust me when I say you got the hard part out of the way yesterday with all the cutting and prepping. And speaking of prepping, if you have not done this yesterday, today would be the day to edge paint your um, tab if you are doing that. I'm not doing it because I'm using a uh, jelly that's, uh, that doesn't need any kind of edge painting. It doesn't change colors. So uh, it's one step less for me to do. But if you are edge painting your um, tab, Either you would do that on day one and do a few coats according to the manufacturer uh, suggestions or you can start doing it today because we won't work with this one until uh, probably day four if, I, if I'm not mistaken. So you will have a little bit of time. But I did want to mention this because uh, I didn't mention it yesterday. So we don't need this today. As far as today's uh, pieces go, we need the front pocket main and the lining. This has been already interfaced yesterday. Then you need the middle panel. Make sure that you do get the middle panel and not the back panel. Um, hopefully you mark them. Mine are different prints so it was easier to see. And you'll also need the middle panel lining and you'll need the little decorative trim for the pocket. Easy peasy, just a few pieces. I'm going to be using my industrial machine for this sew along just for comfort, but it is uh, the pattern is uh, domestic machine friendly. Shannon made it uh, absolutely amazing for everyone to treat themselves to a rosy sleeve. Let's start with the um, darts. So, if you have not made the marking yesterday in the prep, I do encourage you to put your markings right now on both the main and the lining of the front pocket. And we're going to start by stitching this together. So what I like to do, I like to fold and simply look here from the side and see where the two lines meet and do my best to match them. You can use a clip to hold it in place or you can uh, just simply hold it with your fingers. And I do like to do it one at a time because um, the material won't stay, especially this one that it's also not fused super, super well. So I do one notch at a time instead of just uh, peeling them all at once. And I start sewing with uh, about a 2.5 stitch from the set, the end of the dart. So I put my needle down and back stitch a little bit, not too much on both sides. So you will have something looking like this. And you'll repeat this six times. One, uh, three times for the main, three times for the lining. So I see my line here, I see my line here, and I do eyeball it to make sure it's, um, they overlap as best as possible. Last one from the main. Beautiful. Let's set this aside and we're going to repeat the same steps for the lining. You see I have all my markings so we're going to do the same thing and again I tend to just use my my fingers to hold this in place instead of 
pins. But if it's the first time you're making this pattern or you're new to sewing, I do encourage you to use lots of pins and give yourself that extra helping hand. And my daily reminder is that we do not strive for perfection here. We strive for having fun, we strive for making a bag that we're going to enjoy wearing. So do not stress if this is one millimeter off and they're not overlapping perfectly. It's gonna be okay. Mistakes will be made, made and that's okay. We're gonna learn from them. Trust me, I've made plenty of mistakes on my first rows. <laughs> Okay, so now you want to uh, cut this down. If you're using woven, uh, follow the instructions uh, because woven does fray, so the pattern does give you suggestions if you're using woven. I'm using uh, this jelly from Backstitch Prints, so I don't need to worry about any kind of fraying. And I'm snipping this getting it to about a quarter of an inch and I'm also snipping let me see if I can get you here so you see this uh, how it opens I'm also going to snip on in here as close as I can get to the stitching without cutting it. So now it's going to open better. If you are using woven and you're not snipping anything here, when we attach these together, we're going to just lay them on opposite ways. So instead of both going this way, one will go this way, one will go this way. So we'll reduce both. But since my materials don't fray, I'm simply snipping them. And I'm going to try my best to lay them uh, with the um, seam open in the next step. So, you can see what I'm doing. I'm snipping the tip of this triangle and then I'm going here and on the diagonal, I'm getting as close to the seam as I possibly can. I do need new scissors, that I know for sure. Okay, so now we're going to want to lay the lining inside the main. So push the corners out so it creates kind of that 3D effect. Okay, and you're going to want to lay your lining inside. The goal here in this step is to get the lining as straight as possible. If you will have any kind of lining that goes beyond the edges, that's totally okay. We'd rather have that than bunching inside, we'll just trim the excess. So I'm trying my best to open the seam here and here and then match. Do your best. If not, worse comes to uh, worse. Well, exaggerating here with the worst part, you can just flip them on opposite direction. So I'm starting with the curve right here and I'm aligning just the curve for now. The top notch and just the curve. And the rest I'm gonna lay it down, let it come down as it wants to, so it stays flat. I'm going to put quite a few pins, no shame in the pin game. Okay, so now I know this top part is laying nice and flat. So I'm going to push it with my hands to make sure it lays flat here. And again, if you feel that you're more comfortable just pushing the side seams one to each side, like here, so this seam allowance goes to the left, the lining goes to my right. 
If you feel more comfortable doing that, depending on the fabric you're using, it's totally okay. Just don't make, make sure that they don't both get, go in the same direction to create excess bulk. Okay, I'm going to pin that. And you can see, this is already a little bit higher. And that's okay, we're going to just trim that part at the end. I'd rather have a flat lining and trim than a bunched up lining inside and save me the trimming step. So I'm just pushing with my hands to lay it flat and then I'm just spinning and we're going to baste it and then trim the excess. So don't worry about any kind of excess. It's going to be easy to do. Okay, so see, I do have quite a bit of excess there. Probably my, my vinyl shrunk a little bit too. But see, now it lays super flat inside. So we're going to go ahead and baste it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance all around. Just make sure you catch both layers. So here, since I'm, my excess is more than an eighth of an inch, I'm going to use my fingers to feel for where the vinyl is and baste on making sure I catch the vinyl inside. to baste with about a four length. Making sure that everything stays nice and flat. And I know it's, you can see it on the camera, but I'm, I did put uh, wrong sides together, the lining and the main. Just confirming go slow and make sure you keep your lining flat feel with your fingers for where the um, where the vinyl is if it's on the bottom so make sure you catch it and if you didn't we'll fix it no problem I'll show you how, because I have a feeling that I didn't catch it all. Okay, let's see how it looks on the other side. No, I did catch it. Okay, so I have this excess. Easy peasy. I'm just going to take some scissors and trim it off. Make it all nice and equal here. And my line, my um, lining, it's sitting so nice and straight. I absolutely am very pleased. See, no bunching, excellent. Let's go ahead and take the little accent piece and mark a center line if you did not do this on first day when we did the prepping we'll do it now just mark a line along the center of this well, I used red so I hope you can see it You can see, okay, a red line there. And now what you want to do is take the pocket and you want to lay a strip of uh, double-sided tape on both the front and the lining. It's going to be a curve, so we are going to do 
as good as a job as you can. It's not gonna be perfect, but you won't see it anyways. So it's a little bunched up and it doesn't matter. Once we remove the paper, you won't notice it. And it doesn't really matter because you won't see it. So the same thing for the lining. I'm using a quarter of an inch tape, uh, but you can do um, an eighth of an inch as well. Just don't go more than a quarter of an inch for the double-sided tape here. Okay, so here and here. Okay, so now you want to take your uh, accent piece and I'm going to line up this to the back, so wrong, on the wrong side, lay it the wrong side up so you can see that line. And I'm going to start around the center mark and line up my, so, this edge here is going to go exactly where the line is in the center. And then I want to stick it so the edge is following that line over there. So again, it's a curve and you have a straight line. So you're going to have to ease it in, but it can be done. So with my eyes, I'm following that line that I made and the edge. You see, it can definitely be done. You'll have a little bit of excess on both sides, and that's okay, that's supposed to be like that, so it gives you some little wiggle room. And stick it down. I will have a, <clears throat> a little uh, roller here to help with it. So all you have to do now is peel this off. And we're going to fold that trim on top. Come on. Peel it off. There you go. Peel the paper. And again, I like to start from the center, like this, and then go on both sides, just folding at that edge. Beautiful. So now your trim is added, it's secure because it stays there with a the double sided tape. We're going to take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to go ahead and do my, my um, stitch back to three. And I'm going to start at the edge, back stitch a few stitches. And then with an eighth of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew slowly around the curve. back stitch a couple of stitches at the end. Okay. Double check that you've caught both sides. If you have not, like I have not here, you can see, no worries. I've done this piece before. It's not a big deal. Apparently, uh, I make this mistake often. So this time I made a purpose to not triple check to show you a little troubleshooting. So let's say you did what I did here. So when you, you didn't catch the whole thing, you caught it here, but then you missed here, no worries. We're going to turn this into a decorative stitch. So this was an eighth of an inch away, right? We're gonna leave that. You don't wanna unstitch it, you don't wanna uh, like move it so it's not flat. So we're gonna leave that as it is. And we're going to go back and do another line of stitching. And this time I'm doing the line of stitching at a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Following the same 
pattern and you're going to have two decorated stitches instead of just one. And if you take a look at my first rosy, that's what it has. And we say it's on purpose, right? Nobody's gonna know. Nobody has to know. It's a beautiful decorated stitch on purpose. So from the inside, you can only see one for the most part. And from the outside, you can see two stitches. Beautifully parallel and gorgeous. See, this is not fixing an error. This is making a creative decision, right? All right, so now I'm going to just trim the excess and your pocket is done. Let's grab the middle panel. So you should have your middle panel with the interfacing and this corner fused also. And then your lining. If you're adding any kind of details to the pocket, the top, the top of the pocket like here, any kind of handmade or uh, deco magnet, I've seen so many beautiful magnets added to this bag. Oh, I absolutely love them. Unfortunately, I don't have any. I would have loved one, but I don't have one. Uh, I also ran out of uh, rainbow color handmade tags. They're on their way, but apparently they're going to be delivered in three days and I didn't want to wait. So it is what it is. The, the print is already busy enough that it, it's not missing anything here. So I'm gonna accept it. I'm gonna <laughs> embrace it and move on. I was a little sad that they didn't come in time, but it is what it is. So I'm not adding anything, but if you do add a little something here, make sure that you add it now before we do the next step. For the next step, you're going to find the center marking that you did on here and the center marking you did on this and you're going to lay your uh, lining of the pocket right sides with the top so you can see the pocket and you can access it. I'm going to put a couple of clips matching those four points for now it's just the main and the lining here at the top your uh, binding will go where the uh, marking is or you can also use this as a guide your fusible fleece then you have side marking. I'm just trying to find it. And then here, right here. So it all should be laying pretty nicely together. We, if we need to make any adjustments, we'll make them when we pin. So right now I have my four points pinned and I am going to do this extra step uh, because I found that it gives me the best results. So take your time to just simply pin everything. I start from the bottom of, set, of uh, the center bottom and then I go all around and pin. For now, just these two layers and I will unpin them and repin them with the lining after. I do find that this gives me the best result. I know it's easier to just put them all at the same time, but I found that if I do this extra steps will give me a better result. So make sure that when you do pin, your edges are matching here. And again, no shame in the pinning game, use as many pins as you're comfortable with. The more pins, the easier it will be for you when you sew. Again, make sure that the edges are aligned. Gorgeous. Okay? Now, you can do one line of basting if you want. 
at this point totally okay to do one line of basting or you can skip the one line of basting and just lay this and repin. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to again look at the center and start with those, the center markings that we've made with the little snip here. And again, I'm starting from the bottom, I'm laying it down nicely so I feel it stretched, not stretched but laying flat. And I'm just going around and repinning one pin at a time. Making sure I catch all layers. And now I will have a few pins here where the pocket is. Again, I go from the bottom up, making sure it's nice and flat. And it's pretty easy because I have the pins already here, the clips. So I just unclip and clip over one more layer. Three. It is nice and flat. It is nice and clipped all around. Okay. Nice and flat. So the last step for today, we're going to go ahead and baste all around the edge. I'm going to use a little over a um, quarter of an inch. I'm going to use, uh, no, a little over an eighth of an inch. Probably closer to, I don't know, a seventh of an inch, a sixth of an inch. You can also follow the basting line you did before for the um, pocket. As you can see, if you sew the pocket up, you can see that basting line. Careful when you go from uh, five layers to three. You might need, depending on which materials you're using, you might need a hump jump, like something like this, to help you. Also, depending on the machine you're using. So adjust your settings and your uh, tools to the material you're using and the machine. Gorgeous. And just like that, you've completed day two. You have a really nice flat lining. It's all like included. Here, if you had, you might have with what I don't have, like a little side here. But there you go, the front is completed. I will see you here tomorrow. Make sure you check in with your photo on day two comments in the Sew Along album in the Backstitch bathroom. See you back here tomorrow. Bye!